Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black green marionette master food deck titled Master Chef, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the centerpiece of the deck is Marionette Master, a 6 mana 1 3 human artificer from Kaladesh Remastered. And it has Fabricate 3, meaning that when the Master enters a battlefield, we have to decide between putting 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it or creating 3 1 1 colorless servo artifact creature tokens. And whenever an artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marionette Master's power. So every time we play the Master, we've got this interesting decision of giving the Master additional power to cause more life loss or making those servo tokens which will help us enable the master in the first place and we could build around marionette master in a few different ways maybe a black white version making a whole bunch of servo tokens instead we're opting to go for a black green version which plays around with food tokens and food tokens are also artifacts that will end up in the graveyard and trigger the master's ability so they've got a ton of synergy there and we also have the full play set of treasure map which transforms and creates three treasure tokens and treasure tokens can also be sacrificed immediately to generate mana which will also trigger marionette master so we can sometimes just win the game on the spot if we play a large marionette master and then sacrifice a whole bunch of artifacts so let's take a look at the rest of the deck at one mana we've got a full playset of witches often and cauldron familiar as a powerful combo that's still illegal and historic and with each iteration of the loop we'll end up sacrificing a food token so we'll drain the opponent for one from the familiar and for four from the marionette master if we have it in play then we also have the full playset of a gilded goose to help us ramp and of course generate more food tokens so a ton of synergy there too especially nice with our trail of crumbs and then we've got the full playset of fatal push which is also very synergistic in the deck as we can easily enable revolt by sacrificing a permanent like a food token then at 2 mana, the full playset of Trail of Crumbs, which is our main card draw engine in the deck, as we can pay 1 mana whenever we sacrifice a food token to take a look at the top 2 cards of our library and reveal a permanent card from among them to put into our hand, so this can also help us find our marionette master and the other various food generators. Then we already mentioned Treasure Map, can pay 1 mana, tap it and scry 1, so this can also help us find marionette master. And after the third activation, Treasure Map transforms into Treasure Cove, and we also get 3 treasure tokens that we can sacrifice for mana, or we can sacrifice him to treasure cove to draw additional cards and then we've got two copies of golden egg as another food artifact we can play to draw a card and then sacrifice later for our various synergies then at four mana we've got the full playset of wicked wolf which can also double up as a removal spell as it can fight an opposing creature when it enters the battlefield and also helps us sacrifice our food tokens without having to spend any mana so it can also be nice when we have a trail of crumbs going and we're just looking for a way to sacrifice those food tokens without having to spend two mana and then we can also put a plus one plus one counter on the wolf and make it indestructible until end of turn and then two copies of Vraska Golgari Queen, which is also great when it comes to sacrificing our permanents, and then can also destroy stuff with converted mana cost 3 or less from the opponents. And then last but not least are three copies of Marionette Master, and between all these cries from Treasure Map and the Trail of Crumbs we can usually find a copy when we need it. And then the mana base has 25 lands because our deck is pretty mana hungry, especially when it comes to activating Treasure Map or drawing extra cards with Trail of Crumbs. So we've got the full playset of Blooming Marsh from Kaladesh Remastered, Overgrown Tomb and a Woodland Cemetery, as well as four basic forests, five basic swamps, two copies of Phyrexian Tower, which can also generate additional mana to help us ramp into the Marionette Master, maybe by sacrificing a Cauldron Familiar, and two copies of Castle Lochthwain as another card draw engine. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn one Goose. Turn two, probably play Treasure Map. And then we can transform it as soon as possible. Facing Goblins, turn one Prospector. So this is a matchup where we want to draw cards like Wicked Wolf, Vraska and Fatal Push. For now, just play the map. And then I can upkeep Scry if I want to, to try and find one of those interactive spells and still play my Golden Egg afterwards. I didn't have room for Thoughtseize in the deck, which would also be useful in this matchup since the only way to beat Muxus is to prevent the opponent from casting it in the first place. So upkeep will scry. And yeah, I'll take a Wicked Wolf. Will be a good play next turn. So I 
probably have to fight a Prospector, since that can accelerate the opponent's mana towards a card like Muxus. Although I don't know if we'll be able to kill the opponent before a potential Muxus comes down. So yeah, I'll take seven and then I guess we'll just fight the Chieftain instead. Although, don't feel great about a potential Muxus. I also don't want to die to my opponent just attacking me with a bunch of small goblins, so this should help with that. And removing the haste enabler is also a big deal in case they have a Krenko next turn. And they've got the war chief. I mean, they could have played a Muxus if they had one already, but maybe they just wanted to go War Chief plus Instigator this turn. They've got a Firebrand, that's fine. I'm definitely okay with Scrying here at the cost of a food. Just to transform the treasure map as soon as possible and get this Marinette Master in play. Don't need Blooming Marsh. And then we'll untap, and then scry and upkeep. And another Marinette Master, I'll take it. So, I've got an interesting choice. I feel like I just this turn play treasure map, and then make a food token with Goose, and then next turn I can play Master, we'll have uh, two foods, so that's eight damage, and then three treasure tokens, so that's 12 more damage, so that's 20, and then I would kill my opponent. I guess I don't even have to play treasure map, and I save myself two life, which might be worth it. Sure. And then I'll just pass. Alternatively, I could have Play the Merlin Master, make a bunch of tokens first to protect myself. But then I might not be able to sacrifice those servos. Chain Whirler deals one everywhere. I would like to keep my Wicked Wolf alive since it's useful for sacrificing those food tokens. Sadly, my opponent has a Muxus on top of their deck. So that might kill me here. Alright, could have been worse. Although Goblin Matron no doubt searches up something scary. So I'm probably still dead here. Gets a Krenko, and yeah, Krenko can just make a whole bunch of goblins. Because they still have a Prospector in play. And yeah, that's game. We needed one more turn. But they got lucky to find a Muxus on top with a Snoop. So just to reiterate, we would have played Meriden Master, put three counters on it, make a food here end of turn, so we would have had two food and three treasures, which we can all sacrifice thanks to the Wicked Wolf. And of course treasures we can sacrifice whenever. So that would have been exactly 20 damage. And I don't think there's a way for me to survive. I'm fine chomping. I can even put this in front of here. Sacrifice a food token. Gain 3, up to 13. But it's still uh, 14, 15 damage coming in. I guess I can make a food with a goose. And then... Use my treasures to sacrifice the food to gain 6, up to 16. Do I survive that? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I would have to throw away the Wicked Wolf. But I guess it's a way to survive, but then I don't see how I win next turn. Is a problem. because I would lose all my artifacts here. Mm, 
but it does technically keep me alive for an extra turn. And a Wily Goblin, sure. And a Witch's Oven. Yeah, that's game, unfortunately. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Facing Kahira, the Orphan Guard. So it could be a pure control deck, just not playing any creatures. In which case, Fatal Push is not going to be great. But uh, turn to Golden Egg will help us hit our land drops, and then we've got some decent follow ups after. Turn one planes. Gotta make sure to play the Blooming Marsh while we can. Guardian Idol, alright, Serpent is ramping. Could maybe be a prison style deck with Solemnity 9 lives. As we see, Mindstone. And Idyllic Tutor to find one of those enchantments. And finds a 9 lives. 9 lives I cannot destroy with Vraska, but Solemnity I can. So I think we start by playing Vraska. And just destroy the Guardian Idol. Which could otherwise attack my Vraska if I killed Mindstone instead. So 9 lives prevents damage. I think Marionette Master causes loss of life, so it might be able to circumvent the 9 lives effect, but we'll see. For now, I guess I can play Familiar, sack it to Vraska to draw an extra card. And then play Wicked Wolf. Cauldron Familiar plus... Uh, which is often also causes loss of lives, so also gets around 9 lives. I could bring back Familiar end of turn, we'll see. Currently don't have a way of generating additional food tokens. Rest in peace. Well, that would get rid of my familiar. So I could bring it back or I could keep the egg for the wolf, but the amount of damage I deal doesn't matter all that much with nine lives in place, so I might as well bring back a second creature. And then Vraska could decide to destroy rest in peace as well. Although it feels like keeping Vraska around is important. Fatal Push can destroy the token they make with Dawn of Hope, Gideon's Intervention. Alright. Names a Wicked Wolf, so no longer deals damage. Marionette Master to draw. Alright, I mean that's pretty good when it comes to putting counters on 9 lives if we just make a bunch of tokens. They've got one card left in hand, so don't hate my spot, all things considered. Probably just get in with Familiar. And then probably just sacrifice a Wicked Wolf at this point. Could still function as a way to sacrifice food tokens, but I don't have any to begin with. So I think I might as well. And then find a Trail of Crumbs, which could be nice. 
but for now, play the master. Make three servos, hope they don't have a Wrath of God in hand. Alright, Solemnity we can destroy with Vraska. Attack with all. And my opponent concedes, alright, we were gonna put five counters on the nine lives. And then next turn, unless they top decked a Wrath of God, we would have been able to kill them. So yeah, those two main deck copies of Vraska, pretty important in this matchup to deal with those three mana enchantments. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, we've got a nice opening hand. Familiar plus Oven, Goose to ramp into Wicked Wolf. Can't really ask for a better starting hand. There's definitely a consideration to playing the Oven on turn 1, if we fear that the Goose might get killed right away. Next turn play Map and Scry, or we can play Wicked Wolf if needed. Opponent on blue-green. And a Deep Root Elite so they're on Merfolk. Yeah, that's a fine target for Wicked Wolf. Attack for one. So Merfolk's not gonna have a ton of interaction, but they will quickly start taking over the board with all their Lord effects. So we'll get in there. And then, yeah, I'll probably just deal four. I could make a food and then sack it to the wolf to get in one more damage. Doesn't seem quite worth it. And then I have to decide if I want to make an extra food token or if I want to scry with treasure map. Opponent might have a spell pierce in hand, which is what they're considering here. Eh, I'll pay. And then I wouldn't be able to scry or make a food token unless I want to sack familiar. And then use Goose to scry, which I guess is reasonable. Yeah, I guess that's okay, actually. This is probably a collected company if my opponent's just keeping up four mana. So I won't be able to get a good attack in. And then we're looking for Marionette Master. So upkeep's cry. Trail of crumbs, I'm definitely not gonna turn down. And I'm happy just staying back with the Wicked Wolf at this point. I'll leverage our card advantage to find Marionette Master to win the game on the spot. There's company. Trickster can tap down the wolf. So now the question is whether I want to activate my trail of crumbs or if I want to just make more food with a goose. Could bring back Familiar and then activate Trail of Crumbs. I guess it's okay, and then I get to use up all my mana on Trail. Find another Goose. We'll chump the Trickster. Sack to the Oven. And then bring back Familiar, which can be used in conjunction with Trail of Crumbs once again. 
Can also use Wicked Wolf as a sack outlet if we want. Just want to preserve my life total as much as possible. There we go. Opponent's probably reading Marionette Master right about now. But if it resolves, it's pretty much game over. So I guess I'll scry towards a land. And that'll do. And then for maximum damage, I guess I sacrifice my a Wicked Wolf here or Familiar, doesn't really matter. Play Master. Don't expect this to get countered. Could maybe see Collected Company hit another Merfolk Trickster. And that's just lethal on board. In response to company, sack some more treasure tokens. And then can sack the wolf. Bring back familiar. And that's another artifact gone. Alright, this is probably not necessary. And there we go, sweet. So pretty quick win against Merfolk, thanks to a nice start. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn one goose. If we find Cauldron Familiar, we're happy. Treasure map's also great. There's no real reason to play map on turn two as opposed to waiting a turn, but I guess a good sack of food just to scry here. We're up against goblins. All right, I guess I'll save my food so I can play Vraska next turn and kill the Snoop, which reveals another Snoop on top. Ooh, Marionette Master. I guess I kind of want to change game plan now and just try and flip the map as soon as possible. Keep Vraska to kill one of the haste enablers. Yeah, and then we'll just play Golden Egg and activate map, or I could play Witch's Oven, but Golden Egg helps me hit my land drops as well. So I guess I could scry first. Familiar would be nice with Oven, I guess. All right, sure. And then still probably save my mana for now. And then I just want to scry towards more lands. Mindstone, all right. And a prospector, so opponent's going big. Trying to ramp into Moxus as soon as possible. Think we scry. Could also play Vraska to kill prospector or Mindstone here. Cemetery I'll definitely take. So if I play Vraska, I could kill Prospector to delay Muxus for an extra turn, potentially. Uh, next turn I get to flip map, so we're getting close to winning with Marionette Master. I guess I should go for it. So next turn I'm probably not going to play Master just yet, but we'll flip the map, play Familiar Oven, and then set up to maybe win on the subsequent turn. So Vraska is going to die, but that's okay. Just going to prevent our opponent casting a 6-mana Moxus that wins the game on the spot. Second Snoop. That's okay. And I'll keep a Swamp on top. 
All right, just gonna survive one turn, basically. And then next turn we should have the kill. I even have two chum blockers, but if they go Muxus and find Kranko and Chieftain and some other goblins, we could just be dead. So there's Muxus. Opponent's playing a lot of non-goblin cards here, Mindstone. But they found exactly Chieftain and Kranko. Alright, at least they don't have a Prospector in play to make extra mana. So let's see if we're actually dead. Oh, I guess they can use a Snoop to play Prospector. Yeah, that works. And then now they can still play stuff out if they want. Just an attack. Alright, so don't really need Gilded Goose anymore. So we'll do this. Bring back Familiar. And then we gotta do some math here. So we're at 20, scheduled to take 5 plus another 10. So that's only 15. So I guess I'll make another food token with the goose. Then we get to untap, and uh, that should do it. Play master. I guess if they have a jump palm in hand, they could still get me. They should cycle in response to the fabricates. All right, so sacrifice this for mana. Sacrifice for mana. Sacrifice for mana. Could also sacrifice to the treasure cove, but yeah, my opponent sees a writing on the wall. I can sack my Cauldron Familiar, bring it back. That's another five damage. And then with the floating mana, I can sacrifice egg or treasure token to deal additional damage, so my opponent was more than dead. So despite hitting the perfect cards here with Muxus, we still managed to get there and get a revenge against the goblins. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. All our cheap one mana cards and then our card advantage engines. So this hand wouldn't mind drawing a few extra lands to then use in combination with map and trail of crumbs. Play goose for now. Turn one sacred foundry into glacial fortress, so a Jeskai feather deck it looks like. So I'm gonna want to kill that district legionnaire before they can protect it. And then I think I'll play map to start scrying right away. Is this a turn three feather? Nope, not our legionnaire. Maybe a reckless rage to kill the goose. Just an attack for two. Fatal push is tempting. Of course, they could have a God's Willing in hand. Feels like I really just need to hit my land drops. And then probably just play another map. I 
and then if we can flip double map and play master we can maybe win on the spot. Right, they did have Reckless Rage, but I guess they also have God's Willing in hand, and they just wanted to protect our creature. If we can find Witch's Oven, of course, that's great with our familiar. Wicked Wolf is going to be too slow. And I need another Trail of Crumbs. And then I'm happy to just chum block the Legionnaire here. Now if they have a Reckless Rage, they could kill Master before it picks up those plus one plus one counters. Overgrown tomb with the draw. I'll probably need one more turn before I can kill my opponent here. So do I want to keep a land? Yeah, I guess so. And then I can play the Trail of Crumbs, which can also bring back Familiar to give me an extra chum blocker. And then we'll keep scrying with map. And then next turn we can uh, hopefully just win. Could have taken two to scry with map and use trail, but it doesn't seem necessary. There's Feather. So I suspect one of the two cards in their hand is a God's Willing. And then we'll bring this back. They could give Legionnaire protection from black to still hit me. So we'll decline. We do get a chance to block. Fine as one. That's okay. I think we got there. Just gotta make sure to scry. And oven I guess is fine, but don't really need it. Should probably take my draw first, then scry. And then play Marionette Master. Make it a 4-6. And yeah. That's just game here. Play Oven. But yeah, 5 times 4 is 20 damage. And then Familiar coming back with the Oven is another 5. Sweet, so close game here against the Just Guy Feather. Alright, so we got to see some nice games here with our Master Chef deck. The combination of Treasure Map plus Marionette Master is a deadly one, and it gives the deck a fast win condition, which it didn't really have before. And that's one of the issues sometimes with these food strategies, is that they're pretty slow and grindy, so you're usually pretty well suited to fight against opposing control decks, but then you sometimes lack a win condition against some of the faster, more combo-oriented decks in the format, but now you can sometimes win pretty early thanks to the Marionette Master. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.